Hey everyone, it's Bobs. I'm back. Season 1 is upon us and it's brought us some new ground loot weapons. Uh, they kept half of them from Modern Warfare from the last season, season 6, and half of them are, are Black Ops. So today, I'm super excited to bring you guys every ground loot weapon and their attachments. Now it's not an exact science. I've created a spreadsheet for your convenience. It's in the description. Um, but certainly there might be some errors, there might be some mistakes, I might be missing some guns. Basically I had to find all the guns, I had to inspect, check the icon, compare. Especially with the barrels, it can be difficult to, to, to be certain that that's the barrel. Uh, the grips, the perks for the Modern Warfare guns, you can't really verify. But I think we've gotten everything, every gun, and I think we've gotten 90-95% of the attachments. So. Um, it was a lot of work, but I enjoy it. I hope it's helpful. If you guys like the video, a like is appreciated. I'll be doing tier lists and ground lit highlights coming out in the future. Uh, so subscribe, click notifications if you want uh, if you want to get that content when it drops. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna start with the SMGs, the MP5, Ash in the Skies, Rare. It has a monolithic suppressor, Merc 4 grip, thermal canted hybrid, and an FTAC collapsible stock. Last season when I posted my rankings, I got heat. Uh, I'm not an aggressive player, and so I don't use the MP5 too often. But having heard you guys, your comments, you def some of you definitely felt it was S-tier. I have to say I agree. I, I started kind of being more aggressive, trying to use hip fire with it. It's a really good gun. Now the legendary is, it's called the Razor Wire, and it comes with also the monolithic, has an operator foregrip, a thermal canted hybrid scope, same scope. Uh, this one has the close quarters stock. Has a larger mag. I think the Ash and Skies is probably better because of the hip fire, but both are pretty good. The Striker 45. I had this higher up last season. Honestly, after using it, it recoils pretty bad. I would definitely drop it down. The Dream Dasher has a lightweight suppressor, operator foregrip, 4X flip hybrid, and a 45 round mag. Lightweight reduces range. Operator hurts the ADS. The 4X flip also hurts the ADS. And the Striker's just not a really good base weapon. So it's probably just a gun. It's something you pick up if you need a gun. The Halcyon, I think I said it right, Halcyon Days has a lightweight suppressor as well. The 300 millimeter poly barrel, Merc 4 grip, 4X flip hybrid, and a 45 round mag. This 4 grip all hurt the ADS. The Merc does help with hip fire, but again, base weapon's not great. Next, the MP7, the Harpy, it's a uh, rare mp7 it's got a tactical suppressor i've put down the fss recon um i'm not 100 percent certain on that it could be either the recon or the fss strike both help with damage range and also has the solo zero nvg enhanced scope um again another gun that i i kind of put down lower because of the nvg because of the zoomed in scope but some of you push back that you know, NVG helps uh, to, you know, just find guys. I don't really like NVGs, but I, I think I've kind of tried to adapt and I definitely got some kills with it. 2X kind of hurts up close, but I think it's a really solid gun. Yeah, maybe A, S tier. I'll have to see for the season, but definitely a really good option. Next is the Milano 821. It comes in common, uncommon, and rare forms. The rare gun is called Stone's Throw. Both the uncommon and rare have the marathon stock. The Stone's Throw also has a mill stop reflex and a 10.1 reinforced heavy barrel. The barrel increases range and velocity and cold Cold War, we aren't really certain if the Cold War attachments do the same thing in Warzone. For this video, I'm just gonna kinda just assume that they generally do the same thing, but maybe not to the degree that they do in Cold War. But it makes sense that they're trying to buff guns that are geared for multiplayer. So yeah, the barrel helps with range and bullet velocity, and the stock increases sprint to fire, but hurts your uh, hip fire accuracy. Since, you know, we don't really have too much of an opinion yet on the Cold War guns, I'm just kinda gonna go through the attachments and as we play more and get a feel for these guns, we'll be able to better comment on how good they are. Next, the AK-74U. It comes in an epic variant, the Field Agent, which comes with an 8.4 inch Calvary Lancer barrel, 
a Hawksmore optic, a 40 round speed mag, and wire stock. The barrel uh, just only increases vehicle damage, not range. Stock increases sprint to fire. The legendary variant, Big Trouble, comes with a red cell foregrip, a Cobra red dot scope, a VDV 50 round fast mag. Wraps are hard to determine, so I think it has a serpent wrap, but I'm not 100% sure, uh, and no stock. The grip increases sprint move speed and melee speed, but a slight penalty in base shooting ADS movement speed. The wrap increases ADS, reduces sprint to fire, and the stock increases sprint to fire, reduces hip fire accuracy. Again, don't really have an opinion on the AK-74U, so that's that. Now the MAC-10 has definitely been an early favorite of the the big streamers, YouTubers, uh, the Epic variant doesn't have a name, it's just called the MAG-10, uh, but it does have the 5.9 inch Task Force barrel, which does increase damage range and velocity, but hurts your vertical and horizontal recoil control. It has the mill stop reflex, the Stenag 53 round drum, and a wire stock. So yeah, I mean, the MAC-10 has been, everyone's been towning it. So I've been definitely playing with it. Seems very effective. The Gallantry, which is the legendary version, comes with a bruiser foregrip, mill stop reflex, same drum mag, a SARS jungle grip, and a wire stock. The grip increases melee speed, grip improves ADS speed, reduces sprint to fire, and in Cold War it has a flinch resistant buff, but we're not sure if that has carried over to Warzone. Both I think are, are viable and things that you should definitely try out, see if you like it. Uh, the Bison, a carryover from last season, comes in uncommon and rare. They both have lightweight suppressors. The rare also has a GI mini reflex and a close quarter stock. Lightweight hurts range, stock, speeds up ADS, reduces aiming stability. I liked this gun last season. I think they're both solid up close and, and the ADS on the on the rare gun is, is quite, both, both are snappy. So I like it as up close options. All right, onto the ARs. The AN94, the Electra, it's a legendary. It's got a tactical suppressor, Sila barrel, POS thermal, 60 round mag, and an AN94 factory heavy. I also got comments on this last season that I had too low. Probably need to play more around with it. Uh, see how it handles at range. Um, the FR556 comes in an epic and flesh and bones. Um, you know, just check the spreadsheet for this one. I, the FAMAS isn't really worth anyone's time, so I'm not going to waste too much time going over it. Uh, the FN Scar 17, the Epic is the Mother of Pearl, comes with monolithic Forge Tac 20 inch LB barrel, Scout Combat 30 round mag. The legendary comes with the monolithic. It's called the Blood Red Summer. It has a forged tack seek close quarter combat pro barrel, scout combat three round mag, and an F tack collapsible. The mother pearl, you know, it's it's supposed to be for range, but then recoil control is not very good and doesn't have much ammo. 3x scope is rough for close range. It's, the legendary one is just terrible at all ranges, so I won't even bother with it. Uh, Krig 6 comes in a epic, simple plan. The barrel, I pulled it from the blueprint, but sometimes the blueprint and the ground loop version doesn't always match. So it's my best guess, 19.7 inch ranger. Increases velocity, hurts your movement. Comes with an axial arms 3x scope, 45 round speed mag and a duster stock. The legendary, the death certificate, the barrel looks shorter, but again, I can't really verify. So I've put the 15 inch CMV mil spec, uh, could be the contour barrel, which does nothing. The CMV increases range. Same scope as the Epic, the Stenag 60 round. I think it has a tape. I can't tell which tape and a duster stock. I think it has a duster stock. Again, no opinion on the Krig uh, until I've tested it further. Now the Groza also getting some hype recently. Comes in an Epic variant, which again has no name. Uh, it has the Spetsnaz Compensator, a 16.5 inch CMV mil spec barrel, Diamondback Reflex Scope, 45 round drug mag. The barrel helps damage hurts range uh which typically isn't true of barrels in warzone but so that may or may not be true the compensator helps vertical recoil control but hurts horizontal i think it's the epic one's good for short range the recoil was okay when i used it the legendary the barrel is kind of just a guess based on the blueprint i can't really tell um the compensator it's listed on the blueprint as the spetsnaz but it definitely looks like a muzzle brake so i put it down as a muzzle brake the grip helps recoil control hurts movement pad is unique uh it has a kgb pad uh it's unique to the blueprint and we don't really know what it does um so again i think just both are good up close maybe mid with some testing 
The XM4 comes in uncommon and rare. Both have uh, suppressors. The rare, called the Souvenir, also has a foregrip and a 60 round fast mag. Suppressor hurts range, velocity. The grip helps with horizontal recoil control. I think it's the Souvenir especially is a solid option. Has 60 rounds, it's suppressed. Um, I think it's a good close to mid range option. We need to test the mid range out a bit more. The FFAR1 is an early favorite for me. It has a super high fire rate. Uh, it just feels like you're just wiping things out super fast with it. Comes in common, uncommon, and rare. Now the uncommon, so typically uncommon and rare have the same, uh, share the same attachment. That's been the case in the past in Modern Warfare, but some of these Cold War guns, the uncommon guns seem to have a totally different attachment. And this seems to be the case with the FFAR. It has a barrel where the rare one does not. And it seems to be the 19.5 inch Task Force, which does increase range and velocity and damage. Uh, but does hurt your control. Um, it could be better than the rare one because of the increased range. So something you might want to try out and see how you really, if you like the uncommon version. The rare has a grip, helps horizontal, and the tape helps with the ADS. So yeah, I, I really like the FFAR, something I'm going to continue to to try out and use. Okay, on to the LMGs. Some holdovers, Bruin, Smithy, Bic, um, you know I've talked about it. Monolithic, XRK, Summit, 26.8 inch. Uh, TAC laser cannon hybrid. It's basically a meta Bruin minus a 60 round mag. Just make sure you have a capable close range gun. It's top tier. It was my top gun last season because it just opened up the engagement range for you, opened up the options for you um, more than any ground loop gun you could find. Now, on the other hand, the legendary, the spoil run, is has the same suppressor, has the same barrel, same optic, but it has a 200 round belt mag and the Merc 4 grip. So when it doesn't have the TAC laser and it has a 200 round mag, the ADS is so slow. So definitely take the Smithy over this. Um, you can see in the video how slow it ADS is. All right, the M91 has uncommon and rare. Both have monolithic. Uh, the barrel on the rare is an M91 heavy and the optic is a monocle reflex. It's, it's called deep blue. I mean, the barrel, on the M91 helps with range, but just it's just you know this gun lacks control and it's too slow up close. Uh, the RPD comes, I think it has a common version. The uncommon has a foregrip that helps with um, horizontal control. The rare has a bruiser grip, a cobra red dot, and a serpent wrap. Grip helps with melee. The wrap helps with ADS, but hurts spit to fire. I need to play more of it. Stoner 63 comes in epic blue lightning. Has a 16 inch cut down barrel, bruiser grip, axial arms 3X, and a wire stock. Barrel helps movement, no help on the range. Grip helps melee, stock helps sprint to fire. Queen's Guard, which is the legendary version, has the same barrel, a foregrip, a susat multi-zoom, a fast mag, and a wire stock as well. Grip helps with horizontal, mag helps with reload speed. Same as the RPD, same as most of the Core War guns. I gotta, I gotta play more with it. All right, sniper rifles, AX50, you know it. Called Classic, not 100% on the barrel, I think it's a 32 inch factory barrel, which helps the range, has a bipod, thermal dual power scope. Think it might have tape, I can't verify. Uh, Witching Hour, which is the legendary one, has a muzzle brake, has a shorter barrel, 17 inch, same scope, tape, a Singard Arms Assassin, a stock, which helps with the ADS, but obviously the shorter barrel hurts the range. It's kitted more for like a quick scope mid range sniper rifle uh, than the cult classic, which is a little more ranged out. Uh, the LW3 Tundra comes in an epic barrel hunt called the Barrel Hunter, comes with a stabilizer 0.308 muzzle front grip an axle arms 3x and speed tape muzzle helps reduce idle sway the grip helps with uh vertical and horizontal recoil control tape helps with ads it's only got a 3x scope so it's it's a short range sniper basically uh the legendary cursed bouillon is same muzzle a longer a long barrel comes with a barrel 29.1 inch combat recon susat multi-zoom seven round mag and a I think a duster pad, but the zoom is still limited, so it's still short range. Pellington 703 comes in common, uncommon, and rare. And again, an uncommon that has a different attachment than the rare. The uncommon has a shorter barrel, a 25 inch reinforced heavy, um, which increases fire rate and velocity. The rare one has, I think, a 27.2 inch combat recon barrel, a patrol grip, and a SAS combat stock. The longer barrel, I'm not 100% sure, 
are i know it's a longer barrel and so it's definitely going to have increased velocity but there are a couple options that it could increase by a different magnitude uh, grip helps with sprinting speed stock helps with sprinting speed and uh, ads movement speed people have been saying they like the pellington kind of like a SPR-ish type of gun. I've used it. I, I didn't really, it didn't really work very well for me. I'm not the best sniper. Maybe in your hands, it might be better. Marksman rifles, the MK2. Uh, there's, again, from last season, Epic, the Pathfinder. You know, I'm not, I'm just, you can check the spreadsheet the, the, for these two. MK2 is just not a very good gun. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. The, the Car 98K, the old growth. Um, something I got, severe heat for because i had it super low because i didn't i was like i don't snipe uh i don't really use it but everyone's like dude it's it's one shot headshot any range and you guys are right i played around with it it's a down machine it's definitely s tier i totally got that one wrong um comes with the i believe a Singard custom 26.6 inch barrel sniper scope and f tac sport comb this thing is is a beast pistols um the magnum 357 check the spreadsheet it's just too slow the diamati um is a burst fire gun it has, it, the the stats say it has a fire over a thousand not sure if that's true in warzone but if it's true and it's it's mag size is 15 it's more than x16 i typically don't pick up pistols because i'm comfortable with the x16 but if you can find a pistol that has more rounds, has a fast fire rate, I can see the argument to pick those up. So the Diamati, the Uncommon has a muzzle break. The Rare called the Avalanche has a, also has a muzzle break, 7.8 inch extended barrel and a quick dot LED. I would give it to, I would give these a shot and see if you like them and get the feel of it. Next, the 1911 comes two variants, Epic, slight adjustment, infantry, compensator, microflex LED, fast mag, speed tape. Uh, the legendary is a teal steel has a muzzle brake 6.83 inch extended barrel microflex led 12 round mag speed tape i'm dr i think i might drop for the for the legendary one because it has about the same mag size and possibly a faster fire rate so i'd probably give give the teal steel a shot uh the renetti's there's an epic variant called the Re remus remus um the gi has a gi mini reflex 20 round mag xrk speed grip possibly sleight of hand but of course i can't verify that the legendary veins of gold has a desperado pro compensator solo zero optics mini reflex 27 rounds xrk pro grip and an f tech sadis csx i believe the stocks look exactly the same so it could be the other one but last but not least the shotguns i'm a, I'm a big shotgun guy uh the origin 12s from last season both for s tier uh the epic new horizon monolithic impala barrel cronin mini reflex 12 round mag the legendary chopper had the same muzzle same barrel same ammo same reflex scope I just had no stock. The the monolithic Impala and 12 round mag is the core of a meta origin. Um, so both are S tier, both are the type where you can keep these guns and just grab a uh, ghost quicker, super, super, super grip. Uh, the Gallo SA-12 comes in two variants. The Punchline, which is the epic one, I believe has a 20.3 inch hammer forged barrel, microflex LED. I think it has a serpent wrap, no stock. The legendary one is Warden's Ward, same barrel, quick dot LED. 12 round tube speed tape tactical stock the sa12 has a similar fire rate damage profile to the origin jack so i think it's gonna have similar effectiveness obviously the legendary is better it's got 12 rounds but i think both could be really effective uh the model 680 comes in uncommon and rare i i excoriated the through 680 last season i had a really bad experience a traumatizing up close death where i shot like four times and still died so i buried this gun deep on my tier list but recently i've used the hauer and it has it seems like it has a similar fire rate damage profile to the 680 so i might give it a second chance maybe it's like a situational thing where you know head to head you know you're gonna die using these slow shotguns but you know the hauer has been good to me when i've snuck up on people so the 680 both uncommon rare have tactical suppressors the rare one has an operator free flex and an f tech stalker 12 stock so yeah i might give it another shot we'll see the hauer comes in common uncommon and rare the uncommon again following this cold war trend has a different attachment has a 22 inch extended barrel and the bow worn has seven round tube speed tape duster pad which i i'm not certain about but yeah i think any versions will be very quite effective 
in the right situation uh, where you know you're sneaking up on somebody all right guys well that's it again if you found anything that you think is incorrect maybe you found a gun that i haven't found please let me know so i can update the spreadsheet i hope you guys found it helpful insightful uh check back um as the season is going to be a really fun one we're gonna have more tier lists coming up weapon profiles highlights uh as i get to play around with the guns so uh yeah thanks for uh listening and i'll catch you guys on the next one